The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. In the New Testament, the word gospel, you probably know this, means good news. But is there only one good news? Is the gospel used in different ways in different places in the New Testament? This is a question and answer session here on Grace in Focus, and we are so happy that you're here with us today. Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates will be presenting our discussion today. They will be along in just a minute after I tell you about our website. That's faithalone.org, chock full of resources and articles and things that you can use to help you understand grace and the Bible better. Now here are our discussion leaders for today. Welcome to Grace in Focus. Uh, Ken, I think you've got another question from uh, Christina. By the way, it's on the book of Galatians, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's on Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, and a question that's right up Bob's alley. He wrote a book, 10 Most Misunderstood Words yeah. in the Bible. And if you haven't gotten that, I would really recommend, he didn't tell me to do this. <laughs> he, and he, he ain't paying me or buying me lunch to say this either. <laughs> I would recommend that you get it. And one of the words that he discusses is the word gospel. And that's what this question is and, related to. And I've kind of repented on my view on that I put in there. In fact, I'm going to revise the book on that chapter. So I'll reveal that here first to you people that I have a slightly different view on the word gospel in Galatians than I did in the 10 most misunderstood words. Same more or less, but read verses 6 through 9 because all four of those verses are important. Galatians 1, 6 through 9. Okay, so the question from Christina is... Does the word gospel in Galatians 1, six mean the saving message or how to receive eternal life? And I'll go ahead and read those verses. Verse 6, this is Paul speaking, of course. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, and so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Now, obviously, the word gospel there occurs, what, four times? She wants to know if it means the saving message. Right. In my book, The Ten Most Misunderstood Words, I have a section on the gospel in Galatians. And what I suggest is that the gospel in Galatians refers to the good news that Jews and Gentiles are united and equal in one body, the church which is called the mystery of the gospel in Ephesians. And twice Paul says in chapter 2 that Barnabas and Peter weren't straightforward about the truth of the gospel when they separated from Gentiles at the Lord's Supper meeting. They weren't eating food with the Gentiles. And so I suggested that this was specifically the good news of Jews and Gentiles together in one body. However, on further reflection, I think it would be fair to say that while that is true, It also, I think, most broadly refers to the good news of justification by faith alone. Because when you get to Galatians 5, 4, for example, Paul says, you have fallen from grace, you who seek to be justified by law. And the false teaching of the Judaizers was that justification is not by faith alone. They weren't denying that You needed to have faith in Christ and the death and resurrection of Christ. They never would have had a hearing in the region of South Galatia and the churches of Galatia if they hadn't been bringing the message of Christ crucified and risen. But it seems to me what they were doing was they were teaching that you had to keep the law of Moses in order to be justified. So that's the false gospel. Right. I don't think the false gospel is... Paul and Barnabas separating from Gentile believers at the Lord's Supper. Although that is ultimately inconsistent with the message of justification by faith alone. I'm sure Barnabas and Peter didn't view it that way, but it really was inconsistent with the truth of the gospel. So what Paul is saying, look, is if anyone including an apostle or an angel from heaven, an unfallen angel, were to proclaim any other gospel, let him be under God's curse. And by the way, this is not eternal condemnation as some translations have or 
condemned to hell, as some translations have. This is simply judgment in this life. Of course, if an unbeliever dies, then that unbeliever is going to be eternally condemned. But that's not what this is talking about here. He's saying if anybody preaches a false gospel, then he's under God's curse. This is a great question for a number of reasons. Number one, it challenges us to look at the word gospel. How is it used in in different contexts? And what we do see is that most of the time in the New Testament, the word gospel does not refer to the gospel of eternal life or the good news of eternal or even the good news of justification and this idea of cursing as well the old testament was full of curses right for disobedience and so that's another thing here and by the way these are believers at galatia who can be led astray by this gospel and if they began to teach this that you got to have works in order to be justified before god then they're going to be cursed. Right. And when it says in Galatians 5, 4, you have fallen from grace, grace doesn't mean everlasting life. (laughs) You've fallen from God's favor. Would you also say that you have fallen from the message of grace in the sense that that you're justified by grace through faith? Sure. but, But now you're saying works? So you've fallen from grace. You know, in the Bible Knowledge Commentary, Don Campbell was the president of Dallas Seminary uh, during some of the time that I was there. Dr. Campbell wrote the commentary on Galatians, and he said falling from grace means falling from the present experience of God's blessing and favor. And that's right. When you become a legalist, well, then you cease to experience the fruit of the Spirit, and what you experience are the deeds of the flesh. A lot of people think in Galatians that the flesh is somebody who's willfully determined to rebel against God and walking in the spirit is someone who's determined to obey God. No, in Galatians, the fruit of the flesh are those who are legalistic. Yes. They're they're determined to please God, but by their own legalistic methods. And by the way, coming back to verse six, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. The so soon part is that evidently Paul came to Galatia on his first missionary journey, led people to faith in Christ in Iconium and Lystra and Derby. Then he went back through those cities on the end of the first missionary journey. About six months later, he gets a report that the Galatians are being disturbed by false teachers that we now call Judaizers. And in chapter 3, he says, who has bewitched you? He's saying it's like they cast a spell over you. And here in chapter 1 and verse 6, he's like, I'm amazed you're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ. It's like, really? I was with you, and now six months later? You're buying into doctrine totally contrary. And it's just a warning for us how tempting it is for us to walk by the flesh, walking according to a legalistic system. Let me give you a quick example. There is a guy, I won't mention his name, but he went to Western Seminary and was discipled by Earl Rodmacher, a strong free grace advocate. Earl mentored this guy. This guy went on to get a doctorate, and now he teaches at a leading evangelical seminary And he's a leading Lordship Salvation advocate. Well, he has departed from the grace of God in his teaching. He no longer accurately teaches the word of God. And in my opinion, he is reaping the consequences. You know, he's under this curse, not that God has taken his life. And that kind of thing has happened Many times I've known people who were discipled by Zane Hodges at Dallas Seminary who later departed teaching some sort of lordship salvation position or some other distorted gospel. You'll hear free grace people say sometimes, wow, you know, I can't imagine anybody abandoning grace to go back to that system. But it happens all the time. I'm glad, Bob, that you brought up that walking by the flesh here is not what you said, but walking by a legalistic system. That was Paul's description of himself in Romans 7. Exactly. (laughs) So it doesn't have to be, you know, a lot of people think it means open rebellion, like 
Luke 15. I'm going to the far country. I'm drinking. Uh, you know, I'm involved in drug use. I'm stealing. I'm committing all kinds of crimes. None of that. In Galatians, this is the person who's a self-righteous person thinking they can somehow attain justification before God, not just by faith in Christ, but also by their works. And then to teach others that same message. And if they do, then God's going to judge them. Yeah. You'd be wise if you held to work salvation or lordship salvation to keep it to yourself. (laughs) Right? You don't want to preach. If you want to mess yourself up, okay, that's bad enough. But don't mess other people up in the process. And as Bob has already said, that does not mean being a curse that you're not a believer or you never were a believer. Right. And it doesn't mean that you're going to go to the lake of fire. Arminians love to use the Galatian 5 passage. You now, fall Arminians from... are not from the country next to Russia. No, right? no, no. Armenian. No. <laughs> no, those are Armenians. Yeah. But Arminian believes you can lose your salvation. Right. right, and so when they see that verse, you have fallen from grace, they take that to mean, okay, you were saved, but now you're not saved. And yeah, grace right. is not a synonym for <laughs> born again or having everlasting life. Right. You've fallen away from following these principles of grace and thinking that you can earn justification before God by works. Let me conclude, Kim, with one quick point. As I mentioned in my book, The Ten Most Misunderstood Words in my chapter on the gospel, Galatians is not talking about the message of 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 11, that Christ died, he was buried, he rose, he appeared. That's not what the Judaizers were denying. The Judaizers were denying justification by faith alone. It's a mistake for people to think if you believe that Jesus died, was buried, and rose and appeared, then you're born again. There's no such promise in 1 Corinthians 15 or anywhere in the New Testament. The promise is if you believe in Jesus for everlasting life, you have it. Or in Galatians, if you believe in Jesus for your justification, then you're justified. Well, thank you all for uh, tuning in and keep grace in focus. Thank you both for that great discussion. Would you be interested in some free ebooks on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On the site, we've got all kinds of free materials. But one of our popular options is our free ebooks on a range of subjects. They're designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of the faith and scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We are so thankful for our financial partners who keep us on the air. Every gift is tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can give, go to faithalone.org. Would you like to have a chat with Dr. Bob or one of the guests here on the program? Let me tell you how to reach out to the team. You can get us on our email address, which is radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. Next time on Grace in Focus, a lot of people say that eternal salvation is by grace alone through faith alone. Then they talk about getting in a wheelbarrow or sitting in a chair. What does faith alone really mean, and what is the exact object of faith in regard to eternal salvation? Join us next time for Grace in Focus. This is the Grace Evangelical Society reminding you to always keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.